Okay, we're back. We're at Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters on a given Thursday. On a Thursday when the stock market went down 1,200 points, which sort of helps us understand and define our times. So today we have uh, a, a nonprofit, and uh, this is nonprofits mean business too, actually. And the nonprofit is KYDO, and David Tautofi is here. Uh, he runs that organization, and it sounds really good. We need to learn about it. Uh, David, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Jay. How'd you get involved in KYDO? That's, it sounds like a bit of a story, and I wonder if you could tell us. Uh, it, you know, we, we, it was just a group of people from Kamiki High School. When I moved here from the mainland, Las Vegas, in 2015, um, we just wanted to find a way to, um, to be able to impact our kids, the youth in the community, um, giving, bringing resources to them um, that would allow us to do uh, some of the things that we, we knew were important for these kids. And so it was established back in 2015. And, uh, and everything that we're able to do is, uh, you know, contributes to the, the full development of a, of a, of a youth or, or a child. So. Yeah, it's interesting. We, just before the show started, we were talking about how, you know, you need, it, it takes a community to raise a kid. And uh, there, was, there was a time, maybe not too long ago, maybe when you attended Kamuki High School, uh, when the community was raising the kid. Yeah. But it, it's not like that anymore, not in the community, not in the high school. Can you, can you talk about the change that you've seen from A to B? Uh, you know, it's, it, the culture has changed, um, and that, that goes throughout the nation um, from just the way that um, you know, our families and communities are being raised. Um, you know, there was a time when I was in high school where you had a generation of kids having kids. And so we're now in that generation where those kids that were having kids at that time are now the grandparents of those kids who are having kids that had kids when they were younger. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, 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 that really play into an effect of how they parent um, and different beliefs, you know, that, that play into that. Um, but as society moves, you know, so does um, the way of life and um, one of the biggest things that really has, has has had an impact on life in general throughout the nation and probably the world as well has been technology and one of those things you know we, we know is right in front of us every single day are like our telephones and the internet for sure um, as much of a blessing as that that is and can be it, it's also been um, a challenge and, and you know in many aspects it's 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 sort of robbed a lot of our youth in their social development and understanding how to cope and, and to, uh, to um, trust relationships and trust people. And so, you know, that's where we're trying to, um, to fit in and, and help equip these, these young people to, to um, understand that they have control of their life. And uh, one day they're gonna be sitting in our seats, Jay, and uh, making a big difference. And we're seeing a lot of issues as we see it today in our government and our leadership. And, you know, um, however way we want to take a stand on that, um, it's still, you know, it comes down to our future and these kids like people said when I was younger, we were the future. These kids are our future as well. So. Yeah, somehow, somehow the burdens on them are greater, don't you think, as we go forward? Absolutely. The way we may not be leaving them the, a world as good as uh, was left to us, actually. Yeah. So you were in Las Vegas, working in Las Vegas, and you came back. You came back to you know, do good things in Hawaii, do good deeds, good work, um, in, a, in an altruistic way to benefit the community. Can you tell me, you know, what motivates, what motivated you, and what motivates you to spend your time in a voluntary, um, in a voluntary uh, nonprofit organization like KYDO? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, and uh, you know, it, it, as you know, it takes, um, it takes a special kind of person. I'm not saying I'm any much special, but it takes a special kind of person to, to really. Um, to, to take on things like this, knowing that, you know, we could all just be focusing on our own lives. But I came here a few years ago um, just to visit, and I saw some of the, uh, just the place where our community was in Palola Valley from the housing, and also 
the situation with Kamiki High School and um, just the rumors of Kamiki High School shutting down and all of that. But the thing that stunned me the most was seeing um, on New Year's Eve when I went up to Polo Housing to see some family members, I saw just uh, a ton of kids and families, you know, and normally that's just how it is, New Year's Eve, everybody's partying. But to see that these kids were middle school age kids having beer cans in their hands and smoking with parents and family members, adults, you know, I'm not gonna say their parents, but adults around being okay with it, that really stunned me. And that really uh, gave me a, a good picture of, uh, you know, where things are today. Um, and it wasn't until I left that I realized, man, okay, I gotta get back to Vegas, gotta get back into the swing of things, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay, I'll get rid of it, you know, I'll shake it off. And it didn't, it didn't shake off, it stuck on me and it grew bigger and, and that's where I, I, I prayed and fasted about it and um, four months later I made a decision to come back and found myself back in July of uh, 2015. Good for you David that's great to hear it's thoughtful it's kind it's all the right things um, so so you have these kids and and uh, you become a part maybe a, maybe a significant part of the community that that needs to raise them and help them and give them structure uh, and so the big question to me is how do you do that it's not easy especially in these difficult times when there are so many forces and, and, and vectors and influences that undermine, you know, that structure. But you're, you're devoted to giving them the structure. What is the structure you're giving them? Uh, you know, a lot of it is like what we talked about before we started the, this conversation. Um, goes back to old school, you know, goes back to our original DNA. And uh, being a football coach at Kamiki High School, um, you know, it's it's – some one of the biggest keys to our success at Kaimaki High School with our football program in the last five years has been the basic fundamentals. And so for this, it, you know, there's really no there's no real answer to it, but um, but a need for effort and an effort on a, on a on a bigger scale than just an individual. And so it's just basic fundamentals of life, um, investing in our in our kids as as, as families, and having a village, an, an actual village, looking out for our kids and. Like you said, there's so many things that are pulling in and taken away from, um, you know, the way that we, we develop our youth, uh, we develop as people today, that it's made a lot more challenging, undermining a lot of what's been important in, in developing character. Yeah, and, and so, I was telling you as I walked in that the, uh, the stock market is down 1,200 points, <clears throat> and that's three days running. It's uh, down probably about 3,000 points, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just within the last few days. And th what that means ultimately is there will be um, there will be uh, economic uh, you know consequences uh, in Hawaii and maybe the whole world, yep. which means that young kids won't have your kids, your you know teenage kids will not have the opportunities that we might have expected. Mm -hmm. They will be graduating into a, a world of recession, uh, very likely, <clears throat> and this is going to affect our lives and their lives and their opportunities. So uh, what I see is uh, you have the opportunity to build resilience into them, yeah. to show them not only the things that have customarily, uh, you know, undermined their future, but now the things that will uh, maybe mo even more profoundly undermine their future. We, we have to, we have to m make them resilient to mm -hmm. those things. And so I, I go back to, uh, so it's a football thing or it's a sports thing. It sounds like to me, you'd be a great coach You'd be a great life coach. Do you get involved personally? Do you you have your volunteers get involved personally? And what do they do? Yeah, so we, um, you know, it's, uh, first I've been a, a football coach. Um, that's been a platform um, to be able to reach out to the community and to also have a hand in with the kids. So it's not technically just sports, but sports is a, is a pillar, is one of the pillars that's, that, that makes Kamiki Youth Development Organization um, what it is. Um, from family, community, education, and athletics. And within those four pillars, we're able to, to put together projects and, uh, and, and get our kids involved um, within the community and the community involved with our kids as well. Um, so these are, these are projects that we put together to, that allow us to be able to, um, to work with these kids. Uh, we had a big project that happened just a couple of weeks ago, a community service project. It was just a simple cleanup of Palolo Park but what the purpose of this was to bring out the community um, and to get our kids out of their comfort zone, associating with people they normally wouldn't associate with, um, just breaking that stigma that they had in their minds, as well as um, people from outside 
breaking that stigma about their kid about our kids when you look at the kids there's enough to, to, to pass judgment but it was a success and you know those are opportunities for them to to um, to break those barriers that has caused that division in their minds and um, and to you know to grow in, in, in terms of building relationships and having more faith in, in humanity as, as, as young kids and so you know we had over 300 people last you know, on that project and that was a huge success but we, we do a lot of other things and it's based off of experience and like you said where um, our society is going today these kids are not going to be able to, to to do or go into the things that that you know we were able to go into but building resiliency in these kids is really going to be based off of the experience that would uh, that would change the way they think their perspective because they will still have a choice no matter where in life um, they go, they're still going to be affected by choice, and mm -hmm. the choice is going to be ultimately the key to what um, to to their success. So you build them one kid at a time, right? In other words, you, David, you you're going to talk to these kids. You're going to share your thoughts with them. You're going to try to encourage them and give them direction. Uh, how does that work? Do you take them for walks? What do you do? Oh, sh you know, these projects. These projects are always what it is, um, and you know. Monthly, I, I hold a, a dinner uh, in, in, on campus where I get a lot of our boys to invite as many of the problem boys on, on campus um, to come out to dinner. It's free dinner. And we usually have uh, guest speakers that come in just to talk and share about their, their story, their life, it's being um, inspiring these kids. Um, that's one way, uh, you know, and then partnering with businesses and organizations uh, to, to, to make some of these projects happen, like a project that we did taking a bunch of kids to Las Vegas, um, camps in the summer, leadership camps, and, and uh, projects of the sort, you know, just to give these kids an opportunity to experience something um, other than just, you know, a classroom type of talk, so. Yeah. <clears throat> you mentioned also, or, and I've seen in your materials, that you, you don't limit yourself to Kaimuki. Uh, that you you're also working in other areas of the let's call it the larger Kaimuki area, including Palolo. Mm -hmm. uh, how how do you determine um, you know the people you deal with? How do you determine the you know the full extent of your uh, operations? You know, it's just it's it's just determined on the need. Um, you know, the the full extent of the operation. I mean, there's there, Kaimuki is is one big community, um, and and you know it's, it was based out of Kaimuki High School. Kamiki High School is the is the the community school of our community and and for the most part when you look at the health of your high school system it gives you an indication of the health of your community and right now there's a lot of issues and and obstacles and challenges at, at the high school that we're facing today and and it's not gotten any better it's getting worse to be honest and so that that helps us to to see that while well, there's a there's a bigger issue that's happening in our community and for us to be able to like really point pinpoint what's going on in the community it, it, it takes a certain amount of people, volunteers like our, like myself and um, uh, several other people that, that go out of their way to, to invest in these kids to, um, to, to volunteer their time and, and spend time with some of these kids. And a lot of these guys are coaches. A lot of these people are teachers. And a lot of these people are community leaders that have kids of their own. And when you have kids of your own, it makes it, makes it a lot easier to, to understand and to kind of grab, uh, grab, uh, grab yeah. a, grasp, a, a grip of what's going on. So what you know? What are the challenges? I mean, you know, you're talking about um, you know real problems, social problems. Maybe there's. I mean, I would guess there's drug problems involved. There's broken households uh, involved. Um, uh, there's, there's there's crime. There's violence. Who knows what? I mean, I'm, I'm really asking, not, not not stating, but I'm wondering how you deal with those challenges with a given kid or a community of kids. Because sometimes you know, if you don't stand in their way and say no, you can't do that. Um, you know, they will do it. Yeah. How do you handle that? Well, you know, um, you, you handle it with the kids that are right in front of you. A lot of, you know, the crime rates in Kaimaki, just in the community itself, has been probably one of the highest in the state. Um, we have a, a huge um, population of Micronesians, and I think um, we all, you know, they, there's a reputation that they have um, that's really had an effect on the community. Um, most of, you know, I mean, the statistics are pretty crazy, but I think it's 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 not it's really low on, on the low end as far as broken homes. But uh, you know, probably more than seventy five percent of those kids come from broken homes, um, and 
you know, they, they come with a different culture, especially the Micronesians when they, you know, coming in from a new, um, to a new culture like, like the United States and our way of life, it's different. And so the, our, our system and our government doesn't make it easy for parents to, to adjust you know, we have programs, but yet, the, yet you know, it, it's like having to go through a minefield for these parents to learn how to catch the bus, how, learn how to get downtown, learn how to read things to get get to where they need to be. And a lot of them don't have people to hold their hands and to, to help them to get there. So a lot of them end up just giving up and just living off of government assistance while the kids are suffering in different uh, different areas, learning off of social media. And kids in high school, especially in middle school, are probably the most influenced um, group of people um, that um, in, in today's society. And uh, you know, they're learning from different um, avenues, you know, like like movies and social media, especially. And uh, and so, I mean, drugs, crime rates have always been an issue, but even more so, um, drugs have uh, has skyrocketed um, just because of um, the safety that they feel in school. So a lot of these kids are selling dime bags for 100 bucks; they get 50 bucks for that. And so in their eyes, it's like, that's a lot of money. The Monopole truck, you can get a lot of food for $5, the Monopole truck in, in the housing. And so we're settling for a lot less and it's not really helping these, helping them to understand that there's a lot more for them to, to go after and that this is not the life that they want to live in, the, in their future. What about DOE? I mean, you mentioned uh, a little while ago that uh, Kemakee High was in danger of being, quote, shut down. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I, I'd like you to tell me what that means, but I'd like you to tell me what DOE can uh, do and what it is doing and how it is, um, you know, coping with these things from the, what do you call it, the, the uh, departmental level, the governmental level, um, and, what and you know, uh, what what it needs to do, what you would suggest, and, and how you collaborate with DOE to the extent that you have a, a cooperative arrangement. Um, there, there's a lot that the DOE could do. Um, Kaimaki High School is probably the most at-risk school in the in the state um just given where we're at going into the school year this year um the enrollment um as of august was about 678 73 around there but the statistics don't really tell the story you know those numbers there's over 70 percent of the, that number there consists of drop, chronic absentees and dropouts and technically we're having less than 300 kids walking on that campus wow um and so when I went to school at Kamiki High School, we had about 1,800 kids. And, you know, it's always been in that number. And, you know, the system itself, every kid is about $6,500 a, a kid to enroll. And so when the No Child Left Behind Act was, was passed, um, it allowed kids to be able to GE out. And so the reputation of the school has, has plummeted since, you know, in the last 20 years. It's plummeted and, and the leadership has been, has been questionable in the school. And so that, that plays into why people wouldn't want to bring their kids in. We have well over 650 GEs that are supposed to be in Kaimaki that have GE'd out this year alone. And, um, and so that just shows, you know, that that's just the result of some of the issues that are happening in. But it all starts from the top. It starts from the leadership. It starts from um, the plan. You know, the expectations that are put on a school like Kaimaki, with, given the, the challenges they have, are the same expectations put on schools like Kapolei, Campbell High School. Kaiser High School, all these schools that, that are pretty well off, you know, they're, they're, they're strong factors in their communities, yet Kamiki is, is the, little, the little guy that still has to meet the same expectations yeah. um, with, 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 the, with not enough resources. And so what happens is these kids go out to schools, they enroll, the schools get the money that they get to be able to provide the resources to, to those schools. And a lot of these kids end up leaving those schools, whether they get expelled or whatever it is, and they come back to Kamiki. When they come back to Kamiki, there's no resources for them. We're having to take them on, and that stretches the resources even more. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of things that, 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 that really have hurt, you know, the school and the community. Um, you know, we, the, the cafeteria has to make about 350 plate lunches a day. They barely sell 120, if that. The prices are still the same that, um, you know, to get a, a first lunch and a second lunch. A lot of our kids can't really afford it. And, you know, one of the issues is some of these kids don't even fill out, you know, for government assistance for, for, for free and reduced lunch. But a lot of the issues there has just been the parents not having an opportunity to understand what they're signing or even understand what they're reading. So they end up not doing anything about it. And here we are with our kids at school. And we know, Jay, uh, nutrition is a big factor sure. in, in the way our kids learn. So 
these kids are coming in eating cookies and, and, and all of the, the, the chips and everything you can think of because that's, that's the cheapest thing well, to buy. It goes to the larger question of what, yeah. what is happening at home. Um, you know, yeah. to start, we talked about, uh, you know, the structure in their lives and yeah. maybe they're not getting structure at home. Maybe they're not learning about how to deal with the community at home, which leaves kind of a, a vacuum, a void uh, in their training, their perception of their role in the community. And, and so I, I'm reminded uh, of, a, of a movie we once made uh, about Kiala Keha High School in uh, Upper Kona there, Kona Mauka, yeah. a big high school. Uh, and the, the principal, to his credit, understood that you had to deal with the parents and the, and the homes from which these kids came. There were a lot of Pacific Islander kids in this school, and, and there was a lot of mm, racial strife in this school to the point where it had to get closed down once in a while. Um, so what he did was he included the parents mm -hmm. in programs where they would teach the whole family how to go shopping, how to deal with you know, the modern world. Uh, how to deal with uh, all the requirements put on people to engage with government, engage with business, and so forth. And it was really a great thing because now both the parents and the kids at the same time would understand these things. Uh, and I wonder if this is something that could be or is in your in your portfolio right now. Absolutely. Um, you know, we couldn't do it on our end without the parents. And uh, it's you know, even as a as a football coach in our in our system, um, you know open door communication with the parents and having our parents to be able to have just as much of an impact on, on our kids as we do in our kids. But coming from the area that a lot of our kids come from, our parents are, you know, they come from broken homes. So there's just a huge um, difference when, you know, when, one, when they have to choose which parent they're gonna go to throughout the week. Uh, and then a lot of these parents are working three, four jobs, not before it used to be one, two, now it's three and four jobs that they're trying to work. And so, a lot of things are being, you know, there's just a lot of time that flies by where these kids don't have them around. And when they have them, it's just too busy. You know, it's just the parents are too busy doing something else. Um, but we always, you know, in our, in our projects that we put together, it's always the parents that, 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 that we're depending on the most help with. Yeah, it's serious in yeah. the sense that, you know, that each generation relies on the next generation to take us to a better place. Yeah. Each generation, uh, you know, so we, well, we couldn't do this, but maybe you can. Uh, why don't you make a better world? Um, and if we don't do that, then what happens instead of those kids making a better world, they make a world in which the, you know, the, the senior generation has more trouble. Yeah. Uh, and, and that could, maybe it is happening in Hawaii. It sounds like, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a problem in Kamakui High School for sure. Um, but, what, you know, I wanted to ask you, and we only have a few minutes left to, to go to the name of our the name of our series, which is uh, nonprofits uh, do, do business too, uh, and you have a business situation here. You have to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. You have you know even if you have a whole bunch of volunteers that work free, you still have to you know provide the platform, provide the events. You need some money. Um, you need some support from government, from business, mm -hmm. what have you. Uh, in order to stay alive and, and in order for the volunteers to come back again and again and help you. So this is complicated, especially in an organization where, you know, you could be discouraged, David. I hate to tell you that. This could be discouraging, and I admire you for not being discouraged. Uh, so query, how does the business of KYDO uh, take place? How do you stay in business? Well, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is not, um, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, I've, I've had battles you know, just within myself, having to realize, have, having to make decisions for my family as well. Um, but for us to be able to sustain businesses, it's all it's been about relationships, and having the the right relationships with with people and the government and businesses that that's allowed us that believe in what we do, um, then and that allow us to do what we do. Um, and we, you know, we've learned a lot as we we've um, grown in the last five years, and so we're moving into different parts of, uh, of, of our, our organization um, now where grants are now going to be um, uh, the next thing in line for us to be able to sustain what, what, what we need to sustain doing what we do. But relationships with companies and businesses have been the biggest part of our success or even the biggest part of our, 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 our lives as an organization. Um, and when, when I first came on board to, to start this organization, I just wanted to be a bridge between the business world and the communities and to help our businesses on our, in our islands take care of our people um, as, as, as our lives carry on, so. Yeah, well, how do you, 
how do you deal with them? Do you? I mean, how do you raise your money? You you have to have some funding. You yes. Have to with volunteers yeah. around, we know that here at Think Tech. And um, so, how do you raise your money? Do you go? You know, do you have fund drives? Do you have certain uh, underwriters who uh, supply you with the funds you need to operate? So, how how we how we raise money um, is simple. I mean, it's it's unique. It's it's not it's not easy either. But the projects that we put together, the projects that I put down on on paper, are usually our business plans. And so these projects require a certain amount of funds to, to be able to, 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 to happen and to um, execute. And so the funds that we do get in come, that get coming in are mainly to, um, to help with these projects, specific projects. So when people are donating, they know that their money are go their monies are going specifically for a project. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know until we can get to a point where you know we would make, make a living doing this, um, that's where it's going to be, and uh, you know, ultimately, that's what it was meant to be for, to to, to help service our kids. So, so if uh, if 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 I as a business person or um, if I as an individual wanted to help either by volunteering and spending some time with these kids and this organization and your various events and connections, um, if I uh, wanted to give you some money or connect you or help you, for example get connected with, uh, say, government programs that could give you money. Uh, how do I reach you? And what are the opportunities for me? Because, you know, I may want to have the same kind of psychic benefit that you have. I want to help. I, I, I may recognize the difficulties in this generation, and I may want to, you know, for the benefit of all of us, for the community, I may want to actually spend some time and money and resources to help you. How do I do that? Where do I go? So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're basic, um, just an email to Kaimiki Youth Development at gmail.com. Um, just reaching out. Um, it's, we're, not, we're not that big of an organization to where your emails will, will fall by the wayside. <laughs> we'll get to see everything that comes in, and, and it's, it just takes um, an effort to communicate that way and then, you know, and, and, and get some more time to spend uh, to, to talk and to know, know other people that want to participate. participate. Because people that do want to give in, we, I definitely, my goal is for them to also feel like they've had just as much of an impact on these, on a project or these kids as myself and our volunteers, even if they can't be there. And so, you know, this is our Aina and we want to, we want to make sure that, you know, every penny that comes is, is put to the best use that, that, that will return for them to bless them. So. Bless them and bless you, David. Bless David you. Tautofi, uh, Kaimuki Youth Development Organization. You're doing good work and. We should all appreciate you and thank you. And, thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me. Do what me. we can. Thank you. Thank you, David. Aloha. Take care.